I've been indirectly part of a lot of raises in my life. This was one of the hardest I think I've ever gone through. I really want someone to tell me to just hold more. Yeah. These mistakes are gonna kill the company. What reason has derailed you? We have three more weeks of money. I need to make rash decisions. Desperate times require desperate things. Let's see if we can even pull it off. Do you know the exact date it started? I don't know the exact date. March 29th. What, what is happening, what is happening? Today? The idea was we needed $10 million to go out and bring in a million dollar management team and really build the business from $10 million to $100 million of revenue. Should we do this deal on the public market or the private market? My goal is to prep both opportunities equally to make a strong decision whether we're pulling the trigger or one or the other. What do you got there? This is part of the term sheet. I forgot about this term sheet. I forgot that there was three term sheets. This means that I am ready to start really meeting with the investment banks. So term sheets, if we take the analogy of buying a house, it's when you submit an offer. When investors want to invest in you, they send you a term sheet. And then once you sign it, you're binded for the due diligence period. I could pretty much close a $10 million round at a 40. I think that's pretty fair for where we're at. And I think that's a really good area for the business to do to get us to what the next step is. I think I pretty much have my answer. My answer is go close a $10 million round. Went to New York City, met, met, and when I say met, met, that means I'm meeting investors. You can tell I'm in good vibes here. Like the raise is going well. We're 30 days into the raise and I'm already, I've got this closed. I've met more investors than I can probably think of at this point in time, but the community is epic and we're ready to do this. Right now I'm speaking with 8 Capital, you guys, National, RBC. We own the manufacturing plant, which is extremely differentiated from other CBD companies. Everybody wants to play, but there's no real instrument for them to do so at this point in time. We clearly have product market fit. Could we go replicate the success in a city that doesn't care about us? How Midday Squares fundraises is very unique. And so it's not for everybody. We were raising 10 million, but what was so hard was that we only had 5 million that we really wanted to give to a lead investor. You are right in this weird stage where like, you're kind of too big for the investors that want to write the small checks and you're too small for the investors that want to write the big checks. Then you add on that you're looking for board control, you're looking for voting control. And that was met with a lot of scrutiny. And so when we met these people were gonna die on the hill with us. We wanna do seven, but we are very open. If you come in at four guys, and we tell you the four guys, like, let's just have open conversation yeah. about it. This is why I chose you guys. I feel like we're actually doing this together versus one versus the other. I love these guys. It is why I want them on the table. Everything about the way they operate, I love. Uh, what a heavy heart I have on that one. Sometimes in life, the tide's gonna be with you and sometimes the tide's gonna be against you. That deal, the tide was against us. I have a call at 3 p.m. to try to convince the lead investors of this round to partner with This was the beginning of the end of that deal. I'd love to understand who they are from your perspective and what they bring to the table. They are a pension fund. Their mandate is to position Quebec companies for global domination. In one way, shape or form, in US, China, Europe or Mexico, you will find footprint and pretty much everything. And I think with the long-term vision, like they would be a really good partner based on what you told us. I don't see this not working, that's the truth. <laughs> I don't see this not working. $20 million raise. Starts out, we're at 10 at this, but since we're at 10, we might as well bring in a monster partner like Well, they need to deploy at minimum five to 10. Now you're quickly in a situation, well, do we just increase the raise to 20 million, push the chasm of valuation and just get this done? This is where it all started to really actually fall apart is people were willing to put in more money, but they didn't want to push the valuation. So we would have been diluted more. Valuation of the company is what you decide the value the company is when you receive money. If you're raising $5 at a $100 valuation, you take $5 divided by 105 and that decides the percentage of ownership that they will receive from the transaction. The lower the valuation, the more of the company you sell. The higher the valuation, the less of the company you sell. And that just wasn't what we wanted to do. And so we went back and we're just like, no, we're not doing 20. We'll think about 15 at most. And we just could not agree on terms. We have too much money right now. I don't see that as a bad thing. <laughs> it's not great. I've never experienced this level of stress. In my life. Never? At, at this level, never. 50-50, the anticipation is brutal. A lot of uh, smart people around the table, and we came up with a green light. Let's go, man! How are you feeling during that time? Relief, relief. Like, you look at my face in that, and it's like, that was it, that was, it was close. It was like the deal was done at that point in time. It's just never done. It's never done the deal. You no longer have a viable term sheet to raise funds. 
decided that our partner was not a good fit for them to be able to do a deal with. We've essentially restarted the raise back at square zero, but with the wanting to do the deal. What's the best interest for the company is still to pursue the deal. How long it's gonna take to prepare the new term sheets by another company? You see the grimness in the faces, Natalia's face. At this point, we were just skating by with cash every month. From what it looks like is that there's going to be the lead and that existing investors are going to come up with 5 million and they're going to come up with 5 million. Honestly, if like I'm speaking honest, I was ultra confident still at that point. I felt actually really good that we were going to get a deal done with the Oh, I think this was the end, right? This was the end of that day. What's that? Yeah, doesn't agree with the valuation. Which happened after no, the term sheet signing. I'm gonna be honest, seven yeah. days to get valuation straight. And if we don't get straight, then I have to walk. I can't even look at that anymore. <laughs> that's how, that's how. Yeah, that was it. That was the end of the deal. Fundraising has derailed again. Now we're back at square one, meaning I have to start fundraising. I think we're starting to get out of the startup stage. We're trying to build a monster of a company. I want chocolate. I want to feel the snap. We give the consumer finally a confectionery chocolate bar. I think a lot of people were scared of saturated markets. I really want us to be judged based on our execution so far. We had no money going into Christmas break. There was some really serious darkness during the month of December and January, like real serious darkness. We're not going to Pull this, this is when I know that we're gonna smash into a wall. So what do you need right now? I'm telling I'm you really we're in trouble. What do you need from me? Nothing. I want to okay. go home. I'm really done with midday square to a certain extent. It just feels like an impossible battle at some point. There was no way we were getting a deal done in the time before the money ran out. It didn't matter who we were doing a deal with. I need to know how much cash I need to inject in the business to get us to the end of February. Where does that leave us financially? It's crazy. We're literally discussing here what we have left in assets after we deploy all this capital into Midday Square. I believe in this company more than I believe in anything in my entire life. I believe in us as entrepreneurs, you, me, and Jake. I believe in the team. I also believe we're going to get a term sheet signed. If I didn't have Jake funneling in investors and Les manning down the entire operation during that time. No chance the company succeeds. Let's get to city capital now. City! No, nah, I feel like we're in the part of the Disney movie where things get good again. Mid these squares was and Jake came through city capital. How did you even come up with these people? I met Lissa on LinkedIn and we connected and she's bold as She's as bold as us. She told me six months ago that she will be invested in Midday Square. I stayed true to her. I think it's important for everyone. You never let a relationship just go. Always water it. If I go into my Rolodex right now, I got to have close to 80 of the top investors, like the biggest names in North America that I've spoken to because of him. When I start fundraising, I'm not starting from zero. He's meeting them left, right, and center on his trips. And he just develops and cultivates these real relationships that allow him and I to really develop rapport with people long before it's time for them to invest capital in Midday squares. That's what a rainmaker is, man. A rainmaker brings the deals. Everybody round the applause for Jack! I think him and I are unstoppable together. That's the best duo you'll ever find in the entire world when it comes to fundraising. Well, we signed the term sheet for Kevin. <laughs> We ended up with 76 investors. We ended up with control of the board and we ended up with an investor base and a board that has hella conviction in what we're trying to do. It's been a long road. It's oh. uh, the last process. <laughs> Give me the good word. We got your wire. Woo! We're just gonna do some final accounting and send the funds over this afternoon. Let's go, baby. How long's that been? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't wanna know. We have $10 million in the bank account! Oh, bank account! Yeah, that feels good. One year, man. $10 million, one year. That's the road. That's the, the, the road to the big financing event is still in play. Grit, that's all I have to say. It's grit. Entrepreneurship and scale doesn't require intelligence, doesn't require anything other than grit. How long are you willing to eat until it turns to souffle?